Welcome to the Inspired Action Podcast. This is where we have motivational, inspiring conversations and interviews that we hope you'll enjoy listening to. Join us and other inspired actioneers on this alchemical, transformational journey. Welcome back to the Inspired Action Podcast. My name is Jay and I'm here with Lita Herman, my co-host as always. Hello, everyone. Wow, we got so much to talk about today. This is Pod 84. Thank you for joining us. And we're going to talk today about how to ride the wind horse and how to outsmart your own mind. Yes. So it's about being vigilant with your own mind so you can clean up your own vibration. And use your anxiety for as, good. For, for good as a... As a as, as a, a tool of, of weapon of goodness. Yes. So, I mean, anxiety is such a buzzword right now. Everyone's talking about their anxiety. We have so much collective anxiety. We have an individual anxiety. And, you know, it's this idea that we can take action to control our own minds and use this sort of vigilance that anxiety requires to stop the negative self-talk. Yeah. So what if we use the feeling of anxiety and, and turn that into something that's more like a, a warning or a feeling that we can then clean that up? How about, is that what you just said? I'm just like... Yeah, basically. Basically, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like we have these laws that our mind operates under. Wait, and, so like the laws of attraction. Yeah, right? like, like the, the laws the secret. of attraction. Yeah, like the secret. So, you know, some of us have these really negative laws, like nothing good ever comes to me oh, or... Yeah. The one, like the other shoe is always going to drop or, you How know. How many shoes do you actually need for that concept? <laughs> Evidently a lot well, of a shoes. A lot of shoes, right? Like <laughs> Melta Marcos right? kind of shoes. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure she was a positive person. No. <laughs> oh, you th- I don't think so. Well, I don't know. She liked her shoes, but she was always waiting for the other one to drop. So yes, she, she was just, a lot. She, need, she was waiting for a lot of shoes yes, to drop. Yes. Anyway, or, you know, maybe that, that thing, that law of your mind is that you're just unlovable. Or unlucky. Or, unlucky. There's just so many at that you hear them all, right? Right. And so today is about how do we turn these thoughts around? Yes. In the last podcast, before we do that, let's turn this around. In the last <laughs> podcast, we we talked about the Wu Wei and how to, how to walk the Wu Wei, walk the way of the Wu Wei, and how much to trust yourself. That trust with that capital T is the essential you know, ingredient to living the Wu Wei life. Yes. And we talked about how in order to be a sage or what we like to call a wizard in your own life... This trust needs to be cultivated, but positive thinking, as much as it's been a huge mainstay for spiritual circles around the world, it's that just think positive idea. And, you know, frankly, it's almost impossible for many people to just think positive, but it is hard. And so the mind is as fast as the wind. And in fact, the Tibetans often called uncontrolled thinking the wind horse, because they, they thought of it as like this wind horse would run around without reins while you, the rider, was just being thrown around and you had no control over your horse whatsoever. And so actually, you know, that's really true for most of us. And I think that is technically the term, the definition of anxiety. And so we're the rider, but we have no reins on a mind, which is this horse that's as fast as the wind. So that's why we said today we're going to, Talk a little bit about riding the wind horse, how to outsmart your mind, not outsource your mind. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Let's not that, outsource that's your coming mind. coming soon, I think, but <laughs> yeah. today we're going to try to outsmart that's it. That's a new VR feature. Yes, yes. <laughs> outsource your mind. Uh, sorry, so we're going to talk about riding the wind horse. So I think that's really fantastic, and I love to talk about it. And I think that, you know, we have to just kind of get a few more things out of the way, Lita, before we jump onto the, the wind horse here. I'm going to just tie my little horse up here while we... I'll be do that. <laughs> okay. But before we do that, I just yes. want to say... We have a few things here. A little bit more about today is that, you know, we talked about trust with a capital T and it takes a while to build trust with a capital T if you don't already have it. And the first step is you have to be nicer to yourself internally. Yes. So we might be nice as pie to everyone around us. But we can be incredibly mean to ourselves Absolutely. internally. That, that negative self-talk. And yes. we're going to talk about the vigilant mind, yeah. how you can change it. You have to actually change the language that you use to speak to yourself. Exactly. Because we do a lot of really bad self yeah, sabotage. Self talk. Really. And that's what the wind horse conversation is going to be about today. All right. So before we get a little out of control, let's get back into control <laughs> and talk about the Inspired Action Podcast. How do you get more of what you're getting today? So we have some great opportunities 
and just experiences coming up and ways for you to experience more if you're into this kind of stuff like we are. So we have a place called the Alchemy Learning Center and we do a lot of cool things and you can connect with people and you can ask questions and learn meditations and talk more about the five elements, the nine palaces, and of course, alchemy. So we do a lot of that. So just check out the alchemy learning center. Dot com. Yes, we have an, an Understanding the Five Elements class. We have Understanding the Nine Palaces. We have an Intro to Alchemy class for practitioners. We have an apprenticeship program that will be beginning in September, as well as a, uh, a self-cultivation apprenticeship program as well that we call the Master Alchemy Quest. So, so all we, of that is coming up in the fall. We just have more, 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 yeah. more. So alchemylearningcenter.com. I think I'm going to do that from now on. Dot com. <laughs> okay, that's our jingle. That's right. All right, so <laughs> let's get the horses back and ah, deep breath here. We're going we're gonna to release any anxiety and any stress, and we're just going to ah, start to go through this. All right, so Lita, how do we learn to ride the wind horse? Well, first of all, let's talk about those unspoken laws that live inside our minds. You know, everyone's thought patterns are different. And these belief systems that we talked about in the last few podcasts, you know, we talked about trying to let them go. And we just wanted to have this podcast before we proceed on. Actually, our next several podcasts are about actually doing alchemy. But before we begin that, You know, we have such aggressive minds. They're just fast moving minds. And these days, you know, partially it's because our minds are so overstimulated with media and our smartphones and just, you know, we're overloaded with TV and videos and electronic stimulus all the time. There's so many more options than what you just mentioned. We're just being assaulted literally like 24 hours a day. Yeah. Something is trying to get our attention. The average person is exposed and subjected to so many ads every day, so much stuff. Yes, I know. Googled it, Lita. Five yeah. to 10,000 ads a day. Oh, my God. Five to 10,000 to 10, ads. Think about it. A day. That's insane. And this particular figure said it has doubled since 2017. Oh, so my God. So just in four years. Oh, my God. So if you're on any kind of media, even for a little bit of time, or you're just like going through your day connected in any way, you're being exposed. And so your mind is being overstimulated. And now we have whole generations who know no other reality than being bombarded 24-7 with this fast-paced yes. life. Anyone who has ever felt the pull of scrolling TikTok. Or Snapchat and or Instagram or Facebook or there's probably on Reddit. There's whole people who like love to just go for hours on Reddit into groups. I mean, there's just, I'm sure there's literally thousands and thousands of things that are just begging for our eyeballs to stare at and to interact in some way or not to interact, just that little thumb, you know, yeah. that little hit of adrenaline pushing the th- the heart or from scrolling it up. So it's They're kinda... trying to get our minds to do things that we actually don't want to do. Correct. Because how many times have you spent you know, hours on TikTok and then, or Instagram, and then like suddenly said, wait, I didn't even want to do that. Yeah. I call it going down the rabbit hole. Yes. So, you know, I mean, addiction is nothing new. Humanity suffered from addictions since like probably the dawn of time, but definitely for hundreds and if not thousands of years. And every generation has a new set of addictions. You know, this is just adding to the old list. So, you know, we thought... We'd be concerned. Like, can you imagine a hundred years ago if people were worried about being, you know, about media, too much media? I'm addicted to that newspaper that comes to my door every day and 24 (laughs) hours later I get another one. (laughs) Honey, you have to stop reading that newspaper. You're just so addicted to it. That's what's going on in the world. I have to stay informed. (laughs) My father actually, you know, he's in his 80s and the other day he said, so he remembers this, you know, all the time. He said, I'm going to check the weather in the newspaper tomorrow and let you know if it's going to rain. Yes. He actually owns an iPhone, but he totally forgot that his iPhone can instantly gratify his need to know the weather anywhere in the world at any time for any projected amount of time you can know in literally like 10 seconds on your iPhone. But let's get the newspaper out. That's yes. how his mind works. Yes. You know, down because the road. that's how it's been for many years right. in his life. Right. So today, if you're addicted to the news, for example, you know, there's no paper involved at all. You just, you know, your eyeballs are just stuck in a device all the time. Yeah. We're living in the time when you can literally find out anything in the world at any time. If you have any question, just Google it. 
But we're not just talking about addictions in this podcast, which we've discussed, you know, several times in earlier seasons. You know, whether you believe you have an addiction to media or not, the better question really today to ask is, are your thoughts clean and clear? And I also like to add to that, are they protected? Are they your own thoughts? Mm, Or are you being guided and prompted to laugh, smile, thumbs up, thumbs down? I like that. I don't like that. When it, what's the originality of your own thoughts? Do you even have them anymore? Yeah. So, so what do we mean by clean and killer thoughts? Well, you know, I would say that a huge percentage of humans on this planet have thoughts that are self-blaming, yes, self-shaming, yes. and even self-harming. Of course. Yeah. And if a parent calls a child an effing idiot, what? you know, that's beep that, beep. <laughs> beep. That's clearly child abuse. But if your mind calls yourself something along those lines, I mean, even if you don't like to swear and you just call yourself a stupid idiot, you know, your mind doesn't What is that? What is your mind here? Stupid idiot. Yeah. Okay. It's not saying, oh, I understand you're making fun of yourself or calling yourself a name, but in reality, you are a special person and you're smart and kind and loving. No, (laughs) it hears stupid idiot. So you start to hear that story being told over and over and over. And guess what? Whatever story you're telling, your body and your mind is going to believe it. Yeah. So that means that your language to yourself is not clean and clear. Even if you're nice to others, you're not being nice to yourself. And, it, you know, I think it's almost, it might be unrealistic to think that you can do it literally 24-7, 100% of the time. But if you can start to work on these big things that could be like landmines yeah. in your habits and the way you perceive yourself, then you can really get clean and clear. And it means that you've got a mind that needs to know who's boss. You've got that wind horse mind and you're the writer, but you're supposed to be the boss. But you you know, you need to take back control of that mind. So we're gonna go through some steps today to how to outsmart your mind. Outsmart it, not, not outsource, outsource it. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first step. Embracing gentleness. Yes. So the first step is about making friends with your mind. Your mind is trying to help you. Whether it's being nice about it or not, it could be very mean. Like I said, it could be self-blaming. It could be self-harming. But it's really just trying to survive. We are all fundamentally trying to survive. So your brain will tell you what you need to hear to survive. Yes. And in order to get your mind under control, it doesn't mean you have to abuse it back. Like you don't have to be mean to it to get back control. You actually have to respect it. You have to love it. It doesn't help to abuse the abuser. No, you got to do a little R-E-S-P-C-T, find out what you think about me. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yes, exactly. You got to respect your mind. You have to respect it. So it's not about payback. It's about making friends with your mind and all its idiosyncrasies. For your homework, you know, what we thought is the first step is to gently and lovingly watch how your mind works. Let's give everyone's mind a big hug. A big, warm, fuzzy (laughs) hug. Hug that brain. There you go. So watch it go through its negative thought processes without any judgment. Just observe it. What are the thought processes that are happening to you? Yeah, we thought of so many examples. We were laughing so hard. We're going to just give you a couple right now. Like, what do you say if you can't find your keys? Yes. Like, boy, that got unleash the, the negativity. The demons in your mind. Right? If you're in a hurry or you're late and you can't find your purse or your keys or what you're looking for, what do you say to yourself? What's yeah. that, that? What's the language? Yeah, how okay. negative is it? Is it just, oh, I'm late, I'm, you know, no big deal? Or is it, you stupid idiot, you can't, you know, you can't even keep track of your own keys. You're going to get fired again. You're so irresponsible. You're this, you're that. I mean... Wow, we would just went off on that one for a long time. So think about, you know, what would you say or what do you say when something like a small obstacle or something happens? Do you blow it up? Do you just attack yourself or do you just go with the flow? And once you identify this, remember that, again, this is always based on survival. If you're late because you lost your keys, perhaps you think you're going to be fired, and which means then you will not have an income, which might mean that you lose your housing, which might mean you have to go live in the forest and, you know, eat grubs. And wow, like, that's a big <laughs> jump for anyone living in the city. <laughs> I know, but the idea is your mind still lives in sort of these archaic belief survival. systems, so these like, survival systems. Right. But, and. Yeah. You might not really think those things, but unconsciously, that's what living in the survival mode is like. So even just something as simple as 
losing your keys before you go to work could lead you down that right you get your heart rate goes up the the adrenaline all the things stop pumping you stop breathing heavy you're getting you know exasperated with yourself and then all of a sudden you find the keys and or no before that all of a sudden you're naked and afraid (laughs) i I just learned about this show oh my gosh that's another podcast (laughs) that's another podcast Uh, all right so (laughs) i can't i have nothing for that (laughs) So if you're naked and afraid and you can't find your keys, first put your clothes on. <laughs> okay, then get ready for work. Okay. And I'm pretty certain your keys will appear. Uh, but if you are naked and afraid and can't find your keys, I don't have anything for that. I have nothing for that. Okay. Just watch and observe. Naked and afraid and keyless. And you key- probably will be jo- jobless really soon, too. I don't know. That's a judgment. I'm not judging naked and afraid. All right. Uh, I mean, I don't think they get paid for that show, by the way. Wow. That's yeah. incredible. So naked and afraid. That's a lot and to go through. Poor. <laughs> and poor, yes. Uh, All right. No, I'm not judging. I, I know people love that show. Do not send me naked and afraid. Anything, actually. <laughs> no pictures, no emails. I don't want anything. <laughs> All right. Just so that's the first humor. step yes. is observing. So, so think about like, yeah, what do you tell yourself? What is the the road that you go down in your mind if something happens that's not quite exactly how you want it to be? Like say you get a flat tire on the way right. to work or, you know, just all kinds. You forget about a meeting, mm-hmm. you know, there's or, just so many things. We had such a long list. Or you have a fight with someone, a coworker, or right. uh, a, uh, your partner or something like that. That can lead you into some really serious negative talk as right. well. And then all of a sudden you find those keys and guess what? What does it, what, what happens? You're like, oh, that's great. I found the keys. I'm going to go now. All of that energy, all of that talk, all of that you know, words to yourself, your brain doesn't quite instantly forget it. Right. So how do you unwind from that? Yes. And be kind and be gentle. So that's the first step. Just be aware of what triggers you, what gets you going down the road of not being nice to yourself. All right. So that's step one. Now, step two is what we call false premises. So once you start having this relationship with your mind that's more positive in that you're being gentle with yourself... You can start to understand the mechanism of survival and protection, which means you can begin to identify the false premises that your mind operates under. And some of these are kind of deep and could go back to childhood um, or could be like something that triggers you. We've talked about this in other podcasts. A lot of triggers do go back to childhood. And, you know, I mean, some of them are really sad. Like, you know, your father left when you were a kid, so... Maybe you were eight. Therefore, you know, ever since then, you believe everyone in, in life is going to leave you in the end. Or that it was your fault. Yes. Or that you made him leave. Or yes. Or they, they leave. Whatever. Yes. So it's... your mind created these laws or these rules, and, you know, they're just based on false premises. You know, what we don't know, maybe your dad had a really good reason to leave that had nothing to do with you. Well, I think most of these in childhood, as a child, you don't know what's going on with the adults. Right. You know, you you just have a child's point of view. And, you know, there could be a perfectly good explanation why an adult needs to do what they need to do that a child never understands. So the false premise just appears and then you operate under that false premise in every aspect of your yeah, life. You kind of build a whole... Um... You know, what's that, the Jenga, the, the yes. one level on another level on another yes, level, and then you, you build the whole life on this, and, mm-hmm. you know, at some point, someone's going to pull out that middle piece, Yes, and it's all going to tumble down, because it was built on something that may or may not right. be actually the, the reality of the truth. But in I mean, your mind, it it's be, the truth. Yeah, it could be as simple as, you know, you got punished when you were a kid, and, you know, you didn't know that the thing you were doing was bad. And so the result is every time someone criticizes you, you feel indignant and betrayed. Yeah, that happens and, a lot. you know, that's another false premise. You know, you have to protect yourself constantly from criticism or you believe that then you'll be falsely punished. Yeah. So it's a pretty strong trigger for, for people that have created these false premises. So again, this is some deeper work that we're talking about. So for the homework for this is just to start to look at what, again, triggers you. What are you telling yourself? Yeah, and use the keys. Uh, you're about to go to work at a big meeting or a big day, and you you can't find. Well, how would you talk to yourself? You know, like, you know, did someone tell you at once you'll never be anything, or you're always late because you're irresponsible, or where did this come from? And un, you know, just kind of observe it and, and identify see, it. and identify it, and then you can start to say, well, you know what, I am responsible. I am a nice person. 
you know, I'm not what this person had put into my brain. Yeah, because that's the next step. The next step in this homework assignment is take it one step, one step further, because once you understand that any thought that causes you pain or suffering is probably based on a false premise, now you can look at your current life and where you're experiencing pain and suffering, and that'll help you find those false premises. So you, you know, we're trying to root them out like a truffle pig. Yes, yes, <laughs> truffle pig, truffle yes. pig. So you can make a list of these false premises that you find. Right. And there'll be just a, a way for you to start to get uh, a deeper understanding of yourself and yes. how you're moving through the world. And then we can, you know, as you move through on alchemy, those things will go away. They'll, you'll rewrite those stories in a positive, affirming way. And then some self-cultivation will help you cultivate the beautiful things in the world. Yes. So when you find a false premise, you know, you can begin to ask yourself, what is the opposite of this false premise? Because, you know, usually that's the way out of it. And you can make it really simple. If all you knew was, you know... Mommy or daddy didn't yeah, love me. Daddy didn't stay. love me enough to stay. Yeah. Or mommy. <laughs> or mommy. But there's always other reasons why that happened. So, you know, knowing that it's a false premise and that you just jump to the conclusion that you're unlovable. So that's the phrase in your head that you're unlovable. So what's the opposite of that? It's you're lovable. I am lovable. So it's very simple. It's not complicated. You know, people may come and go in your life, but you're the one who keeps saying it's because you're unlovable and it has nothing to do with that. So you're still lovable. Yes. Even if someone else does what they have to do, it doesn't really, it's not a reflection on you. Maybe, or maybe not, but let's just go for today as you are lovable and you are kind and generous and wonderful and open-hearted yeah. and can have relationships with people and yes. you can be happy. So I know some of this homework doesn't sound like it's, you know, the happy homework of the summer, but it's the groundwork. It's the baby steps. It's these things that have tripped you up in the past. And now you can be like, oh, that's what it is. Right. I'm self-sabotaging. Maybe. So if we want to tame this wind horse in your mind, you take one of these phrases like I am lovable or I am safe or... Or, you know, there's many different there's ones. There's a million that can, different ones. Everyone you know, has their own. And you create it into, you turn it into a mantra, something you're going to repeat over and over in your mind, your mind. You need to speak directly to your unconscious mind. So in order to reach your unconscious mind, you have to repeat this mantra over and over and over until you begin to feel the vibration of it changing you. It just stops you being charged and triggered by the That's stories. Neg stops that negative charge. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, like I, I always use the I am safe. And I know, Jay, you've used that too. I have too. It's one of my favorites. That mantra is amazing. So there's no limit to how often you might want to repeat it. For me, I used to repeat it like every day, uh, many times a day for many years. You know, the theory is it needs to be repeated for at least a minute or so at a time, you know, up to, you know, like saying it 20 times in a row. You could you... say it in your mind. You don't have to say it out loud. You can say it to yourself inside. You can also write it down. I had mine on Post-its, and then I would have them all over the place, yes. you know, in my car or on my notebook or on the mirror. Yeah, yeah, and what you're doing by repeating it over and over again is you're drowning out that negativity that's in your mind enough so that something else, something more positive can take hold. And you feel that shift to a more positive state. And you start to believe it. Yeah. Okay. I am really lovable. Do. I am smart. I am nice. I am whatever it is that Safe you or, yeah. feel that is lacking or negative. You yep. can start to turn it into a positive and it happens. Yes. And so we know that our lower brain is in charge of keeping us safe. And that safety, that survival mechanism, it's supporting the resistance to change. Change is all about the unknown. The status quo is safer, according to this part of our brain. It's the devil we know, not the devil we don't know. And we don't want something we don't know because we won't know how to behave. So that's why we have all these negative patterns based on these false premises, these patterns of reactivity, these triggers. So in order to change those patterns, we have to talk to that lower brain self. And mantras are the best way to get through to it. You know, only if we commit to working on it for a long time, though. Sure. Some people can do it through journaling, you know, meditation. You know, like I said, I use Post-its. 
you you know, Abraham says you repeat it. I can't remember how many times. Twenty times. Twenty or times. Like Seventeen that. times. Twenty. I don't. Whatever works. Maybe, you, yeah. <laughs> whatever works for you to shift that perspective. We're talking about a perspective shift, and it might be many things that you have been told over the years that you are or are not. Yeah. So if you feel like you're lacking or you're you know not living up to how you feel on the inside, these are the things that you can start to shift. And or it really, takes time. A really good one that I've used for many years is I am in perfect health. Because when I started this path, I didn't feel healthy. I felt sick. And so it was a big, big trigger for me. If the littlest thing happened, I would be like, oh no, I'm not well. So I really practiced the mantra, I'm in perfect health for many, many years. And now I truly believe it. Yeah. So if you're had a lifelong pattern of bad health or challenges, you know, I have often give this to people I'm working with who have Lyme disease or, you know, any of these immune things, if you can start to shift it and start to believe and then still do your other work, it really is a powerful tool. It's just another tool in your toolbox. Right. You know, it's that, you know, I guess it's really uh, very close to the secret, yeah. um, you know, yeah, law of attraction. Definitely. But I like to say that, you know, all this anxiety you've been experiencing, perhaps, you know, that is vigilance in and of itself. Your yes. mind is vigilantly watching for bad things. Let's turn that around and have you be vigilant with your own mind in a positive direction to change these negative belief systems. Yeah. And, you know, um, you might just be like, oh, that sounds easy. She's just saying that. No, it is that easy, but it takes time and practice. Yeah. And even if you think, you know, Lita and Jay, you know, my trauma is just too great. There's no way I can change. Well, that's, you know, that's actually not true because we work with people all the time and we actually do a treatment for that. It's called the 13 ghost points of Chinese medicine. And we've talked about this before in the podcast, so you can go look that up. But the ghost points, you know, they can be a faster route to rooting out some of these negative patterns that are like lodged in the body cellularly. And barring that though, we don't, you know, we may not feel free. We may not feel like we can change, but you can. We've seen so many people in our clinic, you know, change radically. Miracle after a miracle occurs, you know, to break these negative patterns that have resulted from trauma. And years of trauma and years of a life built on the trauma. Yes. And so, you know, it's it's really about getting you out of stuck places. And it's just easier in some cases to use the 13 ghost points. But this podcast is about doing this yourself learning to tame that wind horse, learning that you can, you know, evolve past this negative mind talk. And so theoretically, you really can do this yourself. Yeah. You just have to, uh, if you learn the language when you are younger or through trauma, you can unlearn it and rewrite it and create the language that you actually want to hear. Yeah. It's like that anxious mind is always on guard, always watching for danger, you know, turn it around so that that watchfulness can be used to create a more positive state of right. mind. I often tell people, you know, when I'm working with them to fall in love with themselves. This is one of the ways to fall in love with yourself. Yes. So if you think that you're overweight because you can't exercise because you hurt your hip and your health is bad because you fell or you always fall or you never, you know, your whole life, you have to undo these patterns. You might. Choose the mantra, I am beautiful. I, I am beautiful. I love I am in perfect health. There's just so many. Yeah. I am responsible. Yep. I mean, I used I am safe literally for years. And even today, you know, there are many cases where I know that there's like a trigger for me. I mean, just even driving down the road when there's a police officer on the side of the road, I start saying I am safe, I am safe and undisturbed. No one wants to get a ticket, yeah. right? And I, I like I added the word undisturbed. I am safe and undisturbed because that's what makes me feel like I'm not going to get a ticket. So even today when I feel safe all the time, you know, every day I still repeat it in tense times. Sure. And okay, so my driving one is I am safe and under the radar. There you go. Right? That's what I say <laughs> a, a lot. That's such and, a wood phrase. Right? That's perfect, Jay. <laughs> under the radar and I'm safe. I like the undisturbed and you know, and you can always do the Jedi. I am not the car you're looking for. <laughs> there you go. I am not the one you're looking for. Um, so you could do a little Jedi mind. <laughs> so in other words, instead of thinking your mind is this bad thing, it's anxious all the time, you know. Let's turn it around. Let's, yeah, let's turn it around. Your mind is powerful. It's powerfully attentive 
to what's going on around you. And, you, you know, we're, we're going to have you harness that power. So, you know, let's say you're going to put some reins on that wind horse, tame that wind horse and use it powerfully for your own benefit. Use it to create the feeling of safety, the feeling of loving yourself, the feeling of joy. That's what we've been seeking. But this anxiety might have prevented us from feeling that. Yeah, and as you start to uncover these 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 layers that are there, it will get better. It will get easier. Life can be fun. Let's start with a, a little bit of the homework for a mantra. How do you? How does someone start and pick a mantra, Lita? Right. So first, you're going to be gentle with yourself and observe yourself, and you're going to figure out one of those false premises, and then you choose your mantra which is like the opposite of the false premise. You start with that. So if you feel unlovable, then maybe it's I am lovable. If you feel unsafe, maybe it, it's I, I am, am safe. safe. Yes. If you feel poor, maybe it's I am abundant. I am wealthy. I am wealthy. I have more than enough. Right. Or if you feel unhealthy, maybe it's that you're in perfect health. So all of these, you, you know, can go on and on. Actually, you can. I was thinking as we were talking about this earlier, you could just go through the nine palaces. Yes. Okay, and dive into those. Yes, you're correct. I'm certain that you will have some that pop out. Relationship, wealth, health. Yeah. I mean, they're all in that list. So you create this phrase for yourself that resonates with you. No one else can give you that phrase. Only you know whether it's going to work for you. So you know, normally your mind doesn't listen. But if you repeat it over and over and over, it does start to listen. And the feeling you will feel is relief. That's and that's nice. when you know you have the right mantra. Right. And so you can maybe sit quietly, light some incense. You could have uh, some a notepad or some Post-its. I like the Post-its. Do they still make Post-its? I think so, right? <laughs> yes. You know, index uh, cards. Index How about cards. That, right? I love my index cards. <laughs> so you can you know, set up the stage, maybe grab one of your crystals or your rock or your favorite mala or anything. It doesn't even, it doesn't matter. Just get a quiet space, you know, and let yourself talk nice, be nice, feel nice with yourself. And once it starts to work, take that mantra into your life all day long. Yes. I literally repeated, I am safe every moment I could possibly think of it for years because I felt so unsafe. I just had a lot of anxiety when I was younger. And so I would say I'm safe maybe hundreds of times a day. Yeah. You can also say my partner's safe, my car is safe, my dog is safe, my house is safe, and go through all the things that maybe be like, oh, did I turn the stove off? You know, the house is safe, the car is safe, you know, did I unleave the window? Anything that causes you stress or gets you on that, you know, negative self-talk, just put it on the list. Basically, you're drowning out that negative thinking. Right. So well, that's, that's a great place great. to do. Let's not leave on the drowning note. <laughs> yes. You're celebrating. Well, yes, we're celebrating. And I wanted to just say that we're really excited about our next podcast. You know, all this work that we've been doing in these recent podcasts and th this work on getting everyone to have a willingness to change some negative patterns, we're now going to embark on the road to alchemy. So our next podcast Episode. I just want to say, so the reason why we're doing this in this order is because oftentimes lead, people ask Lita and I, how do I do alchemy? How do I do alchemy? They just want to jump right to the sexy alchemy there and yes. start doing these amazing things. But these are the things that you have to work out. These are the steps. These are the baby steps. Self-cultivation, you know, meditation, doing the thing, journaling, getting the thoughts, turning the language to positive, getting control of your own thoughts and your own ideas. Yes, yeah, taming the wind horse. Taming the wind horse. <laughs> and maybe, you know, finding things to do with your time other than antisocial media or device or... Yeah. Unless, of course, you're listening to the podcast. <laughs> then we give you a pass. The one no. exception. But yes. find a way, you know, this could be a treat or a reward to listen to a podcast when you're out walking or, or don't do meditations while you're walking <laughs> or driving. <laughs> uh, but no, so the whole idea of this is we're laying out what we think is the path. And you can also also check out our book, you know, Through the Mystery Gate, which talks about this in quite detail. But we are yes. trying to do this uh, a la podcast style. So yes. that's why we're going through these baby steps. And it really is where I started. And this is how I learned how to do it. And it, yeah. it, sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's traumatic. But you know, there is the light at the end of the tunnel. 
And we're going to talk in the next episode about alchemy. Alchemy. So we're really going to start to dive into it. What exactly is the road of alchemy? That's coming up next. Yeah. So, all right. So thanks for joining us today and we will see you on the next podcast. Okay. We won't actually see you, but you'll hear us and we'll know that you're listening. There you go. On the next podcast. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Inspired Action Podcast and you've reached the end. Woohoo. Why not celebrate a little bit and click that subscribe button right there. We love having you with us on this journey and we want it to continue. You can also rate and review this podcast. And if you have already, thank you so much. We read all reviews and your reviews help other people find this podcast as well. You can also be a part of this podcast yourself by submitting a voice recording message and emailing it to us at Lita at InspiredActionPodcast.com or Jay at InspiredActionPodcast.com. And if you want, you can join our Facebook group or follow us on Instagram. Join us next week for another Inspired Action Conversation. And thank you for listening. Thanks for listening and remember to hug the dog.